People Magazine. Uh, you were the third sexiest man alive when they started doing those. Yeah. That's what kind true. of an impact did that have on you? <laughs> really none whatsoever. But, um, you know, uh, they had, when, when I first took on LA Law, um, I was not sure I wanted to do a TV series at all. I didn't, I'd never done a TV series. I'd done a couple mini series, uh, long form things, um, which were really great and, and really well written. And, but I'd never, I didn't really watch much TV. I'd never seen the shows that Stephen Bochco had done before, Hill Street Blues or whatever. I don't think I even owned a television back then, in fact. Um, so when I took the role on in LA Law, you know, I, I was very circumspect about it. And I said to Stephen Bochco, look, I'm gonna do this, and I'm not gonna do any press. I just wanna do the work, and don't ask me to do any, I just, I'm gonna put my, go 100% into the work. I don't wanna be distracted by anything. And I did that for the whole first season, and of course people kept coming to me and wanting me to do press, and you know, I kept saying, no, I'm not gonna do it, and I got this reputation, I guess, in the first year for being like aloof or something like that, but I just wanted to concentrate on the work and make the show a success. So toward the end of the first season, they came to me and they said, and Stephen begged me to do three things, People Magazine, Us Magazine, and The Washington Post. Um, you know, I, I turned and said no to all three of the things, and he then finally just, he just wouldn't leave me alone. And I finally said, okay, okay, I'll do, I'll do these interviews. And uh, he said, oh, well, People Magazine's gonna be a cover. I went, oh, well, that's great, you know, whatever. I mean, uh, and I shot it, and I, I talked to James Grant, who's remained a great friend of mine for all these years. He I know wrote, James. Yeah, he wrote the article. I just got a nice text from him this morning, in fact. Um, and uh, not knowing that it was going to be that particular cover, because like you said, it was only the third time. No one knew it was going to be a thing, because it had happened twice, but no one knew it was going to go on for years and years and years and years. So I thought it was going to be a cover about you know L.A. Law. And then I was down in Australia doing a press tour for L.A. Law, and uh, I was driving along in a limo along the street and I, I looked over and I saw this billboard that said sexiest man down under and then I like what does that mean and then I looked up and I saw that this store had put like a hundred magazine covers in the window all of me and it, I was mortified absolutely mortified and I looked at my watch like what time is it in Boston because my best friend li lived in Cambridge and uh, I had to call him up and say listen uh, I didn't know this was going to happen. You know, it's like this was not planned. Da, 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 da. It was. It, I was mortified. I, like this is before people started making jokes about that and kind of embracing it. It was. It was kind of mortifying. Did you think it might make people think less of you? Um, I I didn't really think about that. Um, but it, yeah, I mean, look, th that kind of thing doesn't exactly uh, embellish one's artistic sensibility, you know, people think of you as like a piece of beefcake after something like that, you know, but um, it is what, it was what it was. I had to, you know, I had to accept it, right? Acceptance is the biggest thing you can possibly come to in life, so I had to accept it. 